Hello sailors, it's Madam. welcome back to Small World of Warships and another tier 8 battleship for you today. Nearly finished grinding this one, this is the tier 8 German Bismarck, a very famous name. And um, how many of you knew about the Bismarck before World of Warships and stuff like that? It's the kind of thing I was thinking about the other day. Uh, because of the era I grew up in, uh, pretty much every Christmas the film Hunt the Bismarck was on TV at Christmas. And you had to watch it because at that time you only had three or four channels and um, on the other channels was things like Blind Date or The Clangers and stuff like that. So if Hunt the Bismarck was on, even though I was probably about five, I still watched it with my dad or my grandparents. So I knew about the Bismarck from a very early age and saw the story of how she was finally taken down. And at that time, um, she was damaged uh, in the rudder by a biplane during World War II. That's how uh, behind we were in some of our technology, but we made it work through the sheer courage of some very brave men anyway. So a uh, very good film if you uh, have a spare couple of hours to watch a black and white film. Also, I think I watched it this Christmas actually. It's still on every Christmas, isn't it? Anyway, so the Tier 8 Bismarck. Uh, what can I say about it? I love it, to be honest. Um, it does have some bad points. Uh, there's a premium version called the Tirpitz, so very, another very famous ship. It's from the same sort of class, I think. And the Tirpitz has torpedoes, where the Bismarck doesn't. And I love things with torpedoes. Uh, it's, when you're brawling, it's just a really good tool to finish off people if you don't quite manage to do it with your guns. I'm talking of the guns on the Bismarck. They're not particularly high calibre for tier. But they do have... Um, fairly good accuracy, but more importantly decent penetration, which in some cases leads to over pens rather than pens, but um, if you hit them citadels, even on higher tiered ships, as this is a tier 10 game again, um, with tier 8s you do tend to uh, find tier 10 matchmaking quite a lot, but the Bismarck doesn't really mind as much as something like a um, tier 8 cruiser or something like that. Anyway, so there is a new ship in this game on the enemy's team, the Kronstadt. That's the new tier 9 premium Russian cruiser. Uh, one of the ships they've brought in to replace um, the premium Missouri battleship. Been watching Flamo's video on it. Uh, it doesn't quite make the same credits and stuff. Uh, same as the Musashi as the Missouri, but you can't get the Missouri anymore. So if you haven't got it, uh, you're probably never going to get it. And I don't think it's going to be like console where once a year... Uh, the ship they're never going to sell again appears for sale. They're actually pretty good on warships, I think. They say they're going to do something, they pretty much stick to it. And um, sometimes they even listen to their community. Can you believe that? Uh, with the new recent radar changes which have just been proposed, I think, and are going to happen. Yeah, so I'm warbling on like I normally do. So, the Bismarck's main guns. Only has eight of them. Oh, and this is the first time um, I'm going to ram our friendly uh, Montana the tier 10 American battleship there. I didn't really cause him much of a drama there, apart from I lost all my speed. Yeah, sorry mate. Anyway, so I'm burning. Right, so on to the other good thing about the Bismarck, it's secondaries. They're some of the most terrifying secondaries in the game, especially when you build your ship like me. I've gone full secondary build. Um, BFT, AFT, manual control of secondaries, so I get that 60% increase or decrease in dispersion on the secondaries. And the range on them, with the flags I'm running as well, is just over 11 kilometres, I think. Um, trouble is, though, although there's loads of them, they fire to 11 kilometres, they're still quite small calibre. So when you get up to here like this, you may have 
couple of hundred secondary hits and not really get much for it unless you get decent fire RNG. Which brings me on to my next point. I don't have a full 19 point captain on this ship. And when I do, I don't know whether to go for IFHE, uh, the inertia fused high explosive skill, which gives you more penetration on your secondaries, even though the Germans have good HE pen anyway. That should see the damages secondaries rack up a little bit more. Or the other choice is to go for a demolition expert, uh, which increases your fire chance. And because you, all your secondaries fire high explosive, each shell has a chance to cause a fire. Although you don't tend to set very well. Oh god, it's happening again. He's slowed down in front of me and I didn't notice in time and I tried to turn away and this is all going to get just very nasty, isn't it? Yeah, so I've used up 14 points to build a secondary spec Bismarck. Saving up to get one of the other two I've just spoke about. But what that means is, what there's not points left for is concealment expert and out of all the skills in the whole game I think concealment expert benefits most ships the most and um, just being able to disengage and repair up in a battleship or even being able to push in that little bit further so if you do catch a cruiser broadside and you're not spotted um, you know you probably wouldn't have done that without concealment expert he would have saw you coming and you might not have got those, ne those nice juicy citadels uh, before he spotted you, so it doesn't look like you're going to be able to have concealment expert on the German ships. The concealment's awful anyway, so uh, does it make a difference? I don't know. Anyway, so you can see what I'm doing here. In a tier 8 game, I wouldn't be sailing around as much. I would more than likely just be sailing in one direction, because in a tier 8 game, I'd play this thing. Um very aggressively, I, that's what I'm going to say sometimes too aggressively and I get caught out but you know me never one for just sitting around whereas in this tier 10 game I'm keeping myself moving um, but I'm not camping at the back I'm keeping myself close enough that my shells will matter I'm not sat at the back firing a spotter plane up oh, there's that, is that the Konstadt let's see if we can punish him Oh, they look decentish. Boom, double citadel. And two pens and an overpen as well. And that hurt him bad. Especially the amount of hit points he's got. He's got more hit points for me, and he's in a cruiser. Um, but he's not bow tanking. Uh, that thing has some amazing armour, but not when it's flat broadside. And I'm looking to finish him off. Come on. Go, oh no, I think I'm going to mess this up anyway. So we can see though, just by keeping my position changing on the map, I've managed to catch these guys out on broadsides rather than just sitting in the same place like the Montana. Uh, they know which angle he's firing from all of the time, so they know how to angle against it. Whereas me, just sneaking in and out, got to be a bit careful though. We are losing on ships, not on points at the minute because we have two caps. Oh, I'm trying to finish this guy off. It's the Yamato, he's backing up. Shots out. And I hate all oh, nice citadel on the Yamato. Damage is starting to build up now. This Hindenburg over here. He's going to be a little bit of a problem. Although he's giving me a little broadside. He is actively dodging the shots. There we go. So we only get one overpen on that on the superstructure. And his HE spam is enough to uh, make me not want to push in there too much further. So I'm going to start swinging around. Double fires on me. Boom on repair kit. And uh, my heel is up as well, so burn the heel. Alright, so there's a lion. I do not like fighting. Fighted. Oh, you can see my lock just switched off. You get, a, I don't know how long it is, about a second after they've disappeared where your accuracy um, is still locked on, but I think it just clicked off and all my shells hit the kill then and here his shells come in managed to bounce it all lovely so I've still got plenty of health I've been playing a fairly decent game considering I'm a tier 8 and a tier 10 game yeah alright so no shots across there that was a shame and now I'm gonna have to make some sort of maneuver here otherwise I'm gonna get myself out of position and that's not what I want to do See, I've got my Hydra running. 
I know where one of the enemy DDs is now, but didn't at the time though. May have been a waste, but you never know. There might have been a whole uh, broadside of torpedoes coming in and ended my game right there. Right, so we see Yamato over there. He's starting to push back in. Just looking around, can't scope any shots at the minute. We know the Hindenburg is to our northwest. Can't be too close though, I'd probably be spotted. You can see how bad my concealment is on the mini map, and that brings me back to a point somebody made in the comments about why I have my mini map on maximum. And uh, as most of you will know, uh, the mini map contains most of your information, and especially these days with uh, one of the recent patches added in some of the things people used to use in mod packs i.e. the last reported position of a ship, the direction they're sailing in um, so that's a lot of information and really how often do you use that tiny little bit of the edge of the screen anyway so to have that information big enough considering I play on quite a small screen as well there we go, ooh decent, ooh here go the secondaries for the first time in this game and you'll see the secondary hits start to rack up but what you won't see is my damage racking up particularly quickly and we'll have a look in the post game stats about how much they actually did right so the Yamato is making a move I'm aiming for the front gun there's like a weird sort of diamond shape in his citadel armour there but they're all lovely Got is that one or two I can't see and we take him down um, to quite low health now so hopefully between the two of us that are here the cruiser over there <laughs> is getting a little bit too close to a Yamato and uh, myself, hopefully we can get this guy down. And you can see the secondaries raining in and the amount of hits I've got. Uh, but there's literally not much profit out of them at all. At this tip. What you need is a nice destroyer or a lightly skinned cruiser to get me here. Oh, that's a shame I didn't get the uh, close quarters expert there, but never mind, I'll take a Yamato dead. Oh, so there's the Hindenburg, it looks like he's moving quite slowly. Yeah, and we're definitely losing now. What else I wanted to say, see he's actively dodging, it's quite hard. If you aim for Citadels and they dodge, you're going to miss. So, yeah. Uh, what else, yeah, what I also wanted to say guys, uh, I think I may have painted a bit of a wrong picture to you guys about this game. I haven't literally um, ditched some of my World of Tanks time to play this and have good game after good game. It's not always like that. Uh, I think what this game, you know, always down to us now. What this game is going to highlight, for even as a bottom tier ship, um, you can pull your weight in this game and feel like you've done something or achieved something at the end of it, even if you lose, uh, which is refreshing for me. Right, so there's two of us left. I'm like, screw this. Uh, I've still got some heals left, but it doesn't look like I'm going to be able to cycle them in time, so I'm going to use up one more. We're going to push in, and we're going to have some fun before the end of this game. And I don't know if any of you guys saw my replay on Pointy Head Jedi's channel, but what do all good uh, Mad Friday World of Warships replay then with? Yeah. Do you know? Well, you're going to find out in a minute. Right, so there's something we do like to shoot at, the Edinburgh, the Tier 8. British lightly screen cruiser, 8 AP shells out. It's not going to take all eight. Pop, devastating strike, two citadels and two overpings, and that was all that was required to get rid of him. So I'm up to 117,000 damage now. We're on fire, I'm pushing in, they know what I'm doing. I'm about to be on my own. Secondaries open up on the line, I've selected him because he's the closest one. Double fire on me again, so I'm gonna have to burn my repair at some point. This Hindenburg. I'm trying to sit to him. It's not working out too good for me. And that was a complete miss. Anyway, so the hydro's up. Spots the torpedoes. I'm definitely gonna miss those. Hindenburg still fine high explosive, so I show some broadside to him to angle up. Um, what I love to do in this game the most. My last shots out are going to be on the Hindenburg. He's turning, turning, turning. I aim up a Citadel waterline shot. They go out. No, no source on those, but here comes the Lion. He's got lots of hit points. Boom. 
Well, I'm dead. Game is lost. Got 175,000 damage from my troubles in a little bottom tier ship. Anyway, there we go, guys. Here's the end plate. Like I said, 175,000 damage, a few citadels, some few secondary hits. Well, only one dev strike, but a decent amount of silver and XP, considering I don't have a premium account. And as you can see from uh, the team list, I pulled my weight. You know. Uh, there wasn't much more I could do there and I think I played an okay game well there you go guys, hope you enjoyed today's World of Warships episode and um, next up will be some more World of Tanks, right, catch you on the next one see you later